on the left of me, I have a very beautiful old school style Defender. And on the right, I have the Ineos Grenadier. Now there is a story, one man didn't like the, the Defender stopped this style, this shape, and went to the new shape that a lot of us see on the roads. He was like, no, I'm not having it. And he was called Sir Jim Radcliffe. Hi Jim, if you're watching. And he said, I'm gonna develop and put my own 1.3 billion into making this, the Grenadier. 1.3 billion, I know, it's a lot. Apparently though, he's got like 20, 20, 12.3 billion. He's worth that much. So he's got a little bit of money. Grenadier, known for the guys in the military that throw the grenades, but also I think it was his favorite boozer in London, in uh, Belgravia. So let me know in the comments. Today, I'm gonna run through all my favorite features of this car. If you haven't done already, hit subscribe and let's go. Under the hood, They've chosen this engine for a reason. It's the BMW 3 litre petrol or diesel. This one, if you're wondering, is the diesel. The Grenadier sits on an old school ladder frame chassis with coil over suspension, beam axles, just like the technology that the old school Defenders were built on. So we are now inside driving the Ineos Grenadier. It's a bit of a hard name, isn't it, to say. Off camera, I kept calling it Grenadier, I was making it sound more bougie than it actually was. Getting into this beast is pretty hard. This one doesn't have any side steps. So it's a little bit of a whoop, jump up into the car. That side, passenger side, does have like a grab rail, a hand you can grab, but uh, on this side, it doesn't, which I'm getting, you probably wouldn't have it on this side because it's gonna restrict your vision. And I'm just getting used to the steering. So the steering already you can, it's a bit of a workout. It's a recirculating ball hydraulic system, which means you've always got to be kind of correcting it. It doesn't sort itself out. Like on a normal car on a normal road, it kind of straightens itself out. You can let go of the wheel and it'll sort itself out. But with this, you've always got to be on its back going, right, come on, I'm moving it here. Turn, I'm moving it here. I'm moving it back. Visibility. It's brilliant, out the front, out the side, got some cool windows there. But uh, when I'm looking from <laughs> out my little uh, rear view camera there, in interior uh, camera, mirror, it's not even like the camera like you get on the new Defenders. Because the door is 70-30 split, all I can see in the middle is the pillar that connects them. So I'm seeing more, more of that than actual rear window and then a little bit of the tire. So I would say visibility out the back is is like pretty poor so far. It's got this really unique feature that a utility belt that runs throughout the exterior of the car. Now you could attach jerry cans to it or boxes. I think you've seen it maybe in other vans or commercial vehicles. We haven't really figured out how you would attach something to it, but it looks cool and rugged. We have a very fancy control panel on your roof, which is so cool. It just makes you feel like a pilot. Anyway, these buttons, I've got a downhill and uphill assist button there. I've got an off-road mode button. I've got a wading button. This thing can wade up to 800 millimeters of water. That's not quite 900 millimeters like the new Defender, but it's still something. We've got supportive Recaro seats. This is the standard trim level. So it's this material is all dirt proof, stain proof, waterproof. So literally, if you have a little bit of an accident, or you get a bit messy, you can hose all of it down. It goes super clean and you can start again. So we're inside the three liter BMW diesel engine. Now, Grenad Grenadier, Grenadier is the way you say it. <laughs> They say, because I keep saying Grenadier, I need to get that out of my head. So anyway, they say, Ineos say, 19 miles per gallon for the petrol, which is just ridiculous. And then 25 miles per gallon for the diesel, which this one is, and this is definitely the one I would go for as well, because you've got lower torque for, in the diesel for you know off-roading. So I want to have a little look at the trip, which is on the left stalk, which I, you can't even actually see, because the steering wheel, which is a two-spoke, is, can be a bit disorientating because you look down, you go, well, is the wheel up or is it down? You do have this, this mark at the top that you see in uh, other rally cars as well, that, uh, which this isn't, that kind of helps you decide where the wheel is. Also, another thing I need to point out is this, the key is on the left side. So obviously being in the UK, when we do have keys, this isn't keyless entry or anything like that. You have to physically insert the key. 
obviously used to putting it on the right side. So when I put it on the left, I kind of do this weird insertion with two hands uh, because I'm not used to putting the key in from the left side, but then maybe that's just because I'm a weirdo. Anyway, back to the trip. Let's see what we're averaging. So I'm pressing it on the stalk. If I press the little button in. So, oh, hang on. I'm going really slow at the moment, to be fair. Uh, that is definitely not true. And it, it goes up and down all the time. But let's just say I'm keeping it in 40 mile an hour and I'm averaging 21.2. 21.2 MPG. That'll be interesting uh, to see how that changes up and down. But maybe you are a Ineos owner of this vehicle. Let me know in the comments what MPG have you been averaging? Quick feature that you may not know about is you open up your center console storage box. You've got a USB-C there and a USB-A and very handy, you can lock your center console box as well. Inside we've got a modern car, but a retro vibe with all these knobs and buttons as well. Old school handbrake here. I've seen that in plenty of BMWs. I'm sure so have you. It's an eight speed ZF automatic gearbox. You've got your high and low gear here. A rotary dial, which works your 12.3 infotainment touchscreen. I've left it on this because this is the coolest thing when you're off road and you want to see your wheel angle. So you can actually use your finger to touch the screen, move it. So that's cool. That's nice and modern. It's come with Apple. Uh, CarPlay and Android Auto is standard. And I just love that you can use your rotary dial here as well. And these buttons feel great. We've got heated seats. Uh, they are plastic, but they do have like a, a satisfactory click. And look at that. That <laughs> looks like I'm going to fire a missile out of that, the hazards. So the diesel one that I'm driving right now is 248 brake horsepower. I believe the petrol one's 282 brake horsepower. The 0 to 60 ranges from 8.3 seconds to 9.6. Obviously, it's going to be the 9.6 being the diesel. The petrol one does get better reviews for it being a little bit smoother. And obviously, it's a bit quicker as well, but you are going to drink fuel. Now, I'm on a B road at the moment in the UK, and things have changed dramatically. Every bump I'm hitting, I can feel along those beam axles. Something is rattling around back there. We haven't got much in the boot. I don't know if it's that dog guard. And I'm feeling a lot bigger on the road. So there you go, it's, it's changed, you know, completely different experience, just being on an A road and obviously a motorway that's a little bit smoother to this B road. Now I'm gonna be a bit of a weapon here. I don't, I'm hoping I'm not gonna meet any other cars. The car doesn't feel like mega wide and the bonnet is quite deceptive because you kind of look over and go, ah, oh, it's kind of small, I can see everything, uh, but there's a bit of a bumper on front of that as well. But when I look sort of behind me, I'm, I'm driving, a truck a wagon here and it just it makes itself known on the road it's it's a bit of a presence it is fun to drive it's a little bit different it's a bit tesla-esque right i know that's weird for me to say but i have to keep looking over to the left to the 12.3 infotainment screen to see my miles per hour and then underneath i've got like a digital revometer which goes up to 6,000 revs and then i've got no dash behind me really really odd just really kind of analog when I indicate, I see it like little, almost like, I think it's just backlit with little bulbs. So a bit old school in a, in a new car, you know, a car that came out in 2022. And this is a 2023 model. So we've got a little bit of uh, modernization with the infotainment, which I love. And I love the displays, it's very clear and crisp. And I love you've got the rotary dial here where you can change when you're moving along as well. It's just getting used to driving the car, the sheer mass of it, and also just kind of, directing your eye line into the miles per hour bit, just like you have to do on the Tesla. And so that's what I meant about it being a bit Tesla-esque, but that's about the only similarity. What you may not know is the rear door to get to the boot is 70-30 split, which is pretty cool. So on this one with the ladder, I can press this little button and this slot's open, it's pretty fancy. And then you've got a little handle here where you can open up. Of course, this is a beast you can tow as well, 3,500 kilograms with this vehicle. And then inside we've got 1,255 liters of boot space, which is colossal massive. Obviously you can knock those seats down as well and have even more should you need it. Uh, I don't think you will, because look at that, it's an absolute beast. I'm gonna try and get inside it. Comparing warranties to the old Defender with the Ineos Grenadier, you get five years warranty 
unlimited mileage. That is a fat statement right there saying, this car is built to last and you can trust us. And then you get Land Rover. I'm driving along now, smooth road, it, it soaks up the lumps and bumps. It's not the most luxury in terms of comfort, but it is more comfort more comforting than I thought it would be. Now I've got Adam in the back sitting in the rear passenger seats. I want to speak to him and find out the comfort levels back there. Talk to me, Ads. Okay, so I wanted to give you a little bit of feedback from the back of the uh, Grenadier and it's not a place you want to be, to be honest. Um, I thought this, this thing would have like plenty of room for plenty of activities, but let me just show you what I'm on about. So knee space here, very cramped. I haven't, I haven't got big knees. Um, and over there, you can see I've got my gimbal, my camera stuff. It's a bit of a tight squeeze. The the chair is like really upright, so you feel like you've always got really bad posture. Um, so it's not a very comfortable ride, and you're sort of a bit too high up. So you look straight out, and you just look straight at the ceiling. You can't. You're not. Your eye line isn't actually at the window. You have to like crouch down a bit to actually look out the window. So, personally, I'm not a fan of the back, um, if you can tell. Although you do have a uh, USB-A and a USB-C, so treat your rear passengers to that. Um, other than that, there's not really much else to, to say about it. You can't see a lot out the windows. And, um, I mean, ride-wise, the suspension's, like, fairly okay. It's better than, like, most pickup trucks. There you go, there are his thoughts. In terms of length, the Grenadier sits between a Defender 110 and a 130. So bigger than 110, not as big as 130. Hopefully that explains itself. It's uh, slightly wider and 80 millimeters taller. You'll notice there's a few badges on the Grenadier. For example, you've got this kind of weird mesh of uh, Union Jack with the German flag. That's basically saying British inspired, German engineered, and quick, come with me. This was supposed to be made in Wales, but Here's the French flag here, made in France. So British inspired, German engineered, made in France. A little bit weird considering the owner was a Brexit backer. Right, we have come to an off-road track because that is what the Grenadier is built for. It has covered 1.6 million kilometers. Rigorously tested. I want to have a go with what it can do on this off-road track. So that's what we're going to do. The car looks like a beast. It makes a lot of noises too. Let's jump in and give it a whirl. Quick tip before we start doing some off-roading. If you have a Grenadier or you're looking at a Grenadier and you wanna know if it's got the front diff or the rear diff, then look to your control panel in the roof. This one doesn't have it. So this one only has that central diff lock. But in other versions, I believe the Trailmaster and the Fieldmaster, they have them. And you literally can turn on your diff locks up here on your control panel. As I said, this doesn't have it. This thing is very capable, very capable. It just has that one beeping, that central diff lock. You can get the, uh, the front diff lock on the front axle and the rear axle on those other trim levels we spoke about. Now this camera is gonna do my head in. So I've got a few big undulations, but the car is sitting high. It's taking it with ease. And it's a bit, it's a bit of a dry day as well, although some of the wheels on the left, the left and the rear left as well, has got a bit of mud on it, but uh, it's not my car. <laughs> Sorry, it's bad. It's bad to say that, isn't it? This is, this is so easy though. Brilliant for farmers, hardcore farmers out there knowing that you can just take your time, take it easy. Oh, this is a big old drop there. I mean, I'm hardly having to do anything. And this is when the steering really comes into play as well. You can just control it. It's not the lightest. It has got a bit of weight to it, especially when you're driving on road as well. I can see how it's eventually it gives you a bit of a workout. But again, this is in its purest environment, in the wild, off-roading. This isn't the most dramatic of off-road courses, but it still just highlights this car's ability to just take all oh, these big gaps in the road, these giant mud ruts with ease. And I mean, what a cool car, what an absolute beast. 
It's up for £72,000 at Centurion Automotive. Should give them a shout out. Thanks ever so much for letting us have a little go in this car. So if you are interested, we will drop a link in the description below for you guys to check it out and have a look. And I think if you are a farmer that's got a bit of money and wants one of these, loves the old school Defenders, but wants something a little bit more modern and fresh, you've got all the gadgets, the tech, all these buttons, the control panel looks insane. It's definitely a bit of me. It's one of my favorite things of the car. But you've got that, that peace of mind knowing that this car, one, has been rigorously tested. A billionaire playboy, Sir Jim Radcliffe, he'll love that I called him that, by the way. Um, you love it, Jim, come on. Has, you know, put all his hard earned cash into this car. 1.3 billion to develop and make this car. And he's passionate about it. And the people that are passionate about old school defenders, off-roading vehicles, are definitely gonna love this car. Give it a whirl, give it a test drive, and it could be for you, something a little bit different. Maybe you don't want the new Defender because you don't like the shape. I actually like the new shape for the Defender. But this has just been so easy. So I would love to know your guys' thoughts on what you think about the Ineos Grenadier in the comments below. A little tip, this is how you turn on the off-road mode. Up to the top on your control panel. Press and hold off-road button. When it flashes, you'll get an attention on here. You are now entering off-road mode. Press it one more to activate it. Another little attention message and then click OK. You are now in off-road mode. So that has been our video on the Ineos Grenadier. This car is an absolute beast. It takes a bit of getting used to with that steering. It could be a little bit lighter, but it's the off-road weapon. It makes some weird noises as well, like dong, very futuristic with an analog vibe. We did a bit of off-roading. We took it on road to see what it was like. Different on A roads. It's gonna be smooth and comforting. On the B roads, we saw it shake us up a little bit more. I think it's a great car and a definite good option if you wanna be a little bit more alternative and edgy towards you know, an old school Defender. But I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments, would you love a Grenadier over a Defender? What is your favorite part of the car? I wanna know everything. As always, throw me a like if you like the episode, get subbed, and I will see you on the next one.